Hi everyone and welcome back. It's been nine months since my previous Mexico trip when we visited Pachuca. This hill is so steep. Laxcala. Laxcala does offer absolutely everything that everywhere else in Mexico does. And Cuenavaca for Dia de Muertos. After a flash forward video in London attempting to predict 2020, this year I wasn't in Mexico as much. Good luck with that. I moved to Serbia where I spent the beginning of the year with various cats, yeah, whiskey. driving around in 70s Zastavas, eating enough Serbian food to feed the 5,000, and short trips to Bosnia and Herzegovina and Austria before getting stuck in Sweden as COVID struck. Brilliant. I made the decision not to return to the UK and ended up in Belarus for three months where I published two ebooks and quit being a fake ass YouTuber after designing a website and blog. With Mexico being one of the only options at the time, I booked a flight back in May. I will see you in Mexico. Which was canceled three times, resulting in a return to Serbia and an unexpected trip to North Macedonia. Until finally, can you guess where I am? As always, we'll be focusing on grit and reality, not endlessly pretending life in Mexico is perfect or using COVID for views. That's right, amigos. Break out the Al Pastor, the Uber Boeing, and the sarcasm. We're back in Mexico. Okay, vamos. Hola, amigos. Sí, hemos regresado a México, específicamente a la ciudad de México. Y hoy estoy en para mí una lugar nuevo. It's Tapalapa. Hmm. Well, let's go. Okay, let's walk and talk. So, in the past, I've done videos in Tepito, Doc Torres. I lived there for two months, and Acatepec in Estado de Mexico. All areas that people tell me are extremely dangerous. And after much feedback from those videos, I've come to Iztapalapa, which is in the southeast of Mexico City. And my first impressions are the fact that it feels like a city in itself. And that's because it was up until 1928. And just like with every large city as it expands, it kind of swallows up areas around the periphery. So. It's now a borough of Mexico City with just under 2 million people, I believe, which is insane when you think about it comparing to other cities around the world. There's a part of this city that has 2 million people. It's crazy. Hello. It's a Mexican beautiful angel. And of course, this isn't one of those moving to Mexico channels. One of the ones that just hangs around in Condesa and Roma. You're not going to catch me in Condesa, no chance. Hence why I'm here, because I like to show places that you wouldn't necessarily think of when it comes to Mexico City. And the thing about this place, alongside issues like overpopulation and uncontrolled expansion, comes issues like crime. You know, so obviously this area supposedly has one of the highest crime rates in Mexico City. And there are issues such as poor education, water shortages, and also drug trafficking, which um, I think we've become accustomed to by now in Mexico City. It's Tapalapa really is one of the things that really personifies Mexico City for me. You can just jump on the metro, you can go a few stops and find yourself in a completely different place with a different feel. I'm in Pueblo Los Reyes, Culhuacan. Just look at all the street art, there's tons of it. The Three Kings, gold, frankincense and myrrh, right? Remembering my religious education from school. Uh, let's head up here. Right, we're going to do some travel stuff and have some food in a minute. But first, you know I said at the beginning that this is not a COVID for views video, it's not, but because it's my first time back in Mexico, I have to mention it at least for a minute. And the thing is, there's another reason I'm in It's Tapalapa, and that's because of this. The ovens never stop burning. Black smoke billows out from Mexico City's crematoria. 
they're cremating here on an industrial scale and the bodies don't stop coming. That was a Sky News report from a good few months ago now where it talked about Mexico City's response to COVID-19. It showed ch chimneys with ash billowing from them from crematoriums and morgues where people's bodies were being burnt obviously because of COVID-19 and it showed cavalcades of funeral cars lining the streets. But I've been walking around Iztapalapa for a few hours today. I've not seen any of that. I've walked past a crematorium. There was not a mountain of smoke coming from it. Obviously, that was a good few months ago now. It's now a few months later. Maybe things have improved. I don't know. Let me know down in the comments. But I read comments on that video and I've spoken to a subscriber who lives around here who said that that video, that report was not accurate. And it doesn't surprise me in the slightest, actually, because you know what the Western mainstream media is like? It likes to portray Mexico, Mexico and Mexico City as this third world hellhole that can't deal with anything in comparison to Europe and the US. But that's just not the case because my impression of Mexico City and how people are dealing with it and how people have responded to it is one of, I'm impressed, overly impressed because I'll go into Starbucks, I'll go into El Pescadito, I'll go to the supermarket and I'll have to wear a mask, I'll have to have a temperature check, I have to have antibacterial gel, you know, and people observe social distancing. It's something I haven't experienced so far this year because in Europe, in all the cities I've been in Europe, it's completely different. And if I compare Mexico City to London, it's like night and day. Mexico City's doing it better. Me London is an absolute disaster, trust me. You don't want to go there. Mexico City is the place to come if you actually want to feel vaguely protected and safe, if you know what I mean, which, you know, for someone that hasn't been in Mexico for a long time now, it's quite surprising for me because part of me started to believe that mainstream media, you know? So if you are planning to come to Mexico, do yourself a favour, don't listen to those news reports, don't listen to mainstream media, listen to people like me who are actually here on the ground, listen to other YouTubers that are talking about it, people that are experiencing it in real life, in real time. So that's that. Tums some food. I feel like I'm properly back in Mexico now. I'm in a very local uh, taco place on the way to uh, Culhuacan. I'm basically there, just outside the metro station. There's a huge thing of uh, Al Pastor at the front. Um, I'm getting three out my door. I must have not had about 30 since I've been back in Mexico City, but I'll pretend that it's the first time. And this is a real like local place, so I really have to test my Spanish. It's the sort of place that a couple of years ago I would have felt petrified to come into because I didn't speak a word of Spanish. But actually now I can fit in, kind of, and feel like a local. The food is on its way. <laughs> So, it's good to be back in Mexico having out that door. And I must admit, they are quite small. Um, but I forgot to ask for cilantro, but I did say steamed piña, no pineapple, and a very little onion, because I'm not a big fan of onion. So it does look a bit bare, any Mexicans watching. I know that, but our pastor is back. Mm. It's never not good. It's the taste of Mexico. The salsa, I'm gonna cry because of the al pastor. <laughs> and it, actually, it's okay without the cilantro. A lot of people like to say they don't like it. I do, but not this time. Mm. Mm. Heaven. This has made my day. Finished. Uh, gracias, amigo. Taking a bit of a rest after those tacos al pastor. I'm at Mercado, not Cuyacan, Culhuacan. This is a Barrio Magico. We've heard of Pueblo Magicos, right? But this is something completely different. It's, um, I believe, the Barrio Magico thing was designed to encourage tourism to this sort of area. and. It doesn't feel like Mexico City. Where am I? Finally, I think I feel like I'm at home again in Mexico City. I could cry. You got chicken breast, pechuga, you got tostadas al el gallo. 
there was a pescadito um, fish sort of thing up there. I, I wish I had that actually. Maybe I'll have to come back here. Oh, fireworks. Right, we're walking the streets of Itztapalapa. There are so many amazing street food places back there. And the thing I wanted to highlight, one of my frustrations about this year is people's, so many people's ignorance about the fact that not everyone's in a place in the world that, where they have the luxury of being paid by the government 80% of their salary or whatever. Not everyone has that luxury. People in Mexico City, abuelitas selling tortas on the street do not have that luxury. There's the metro. You know, it's um, one thing that's really frustrated me, the fact that people don't understand that. People have to go out to put food on the table. This is their bread and butter. And that's what's happened in Mexico. I have the luxury where I speak English. English teachers are in demand, but not everyone's in that position. This is a pretty street. You've got the all too familiar flags blowing in the wind up there. You've got street art and look at all that street art. Stunning. This is definitely a place you should visit. And um, this Kulbakan, obviously it's a uh, Nahuatl, an old Aztec place that was under the rule of Teotihuacan, I believe. Um, and it was established around 600 years after Christ. I think that was right, but whatever. You can read about it. Let's have a look at the street art. There is a monastery as well, but I think it's closed. Um, it's one of the remaining 16th century pre-Hispanic monasteries in Mexico City. Let's see if we can find a way in. There is a guy sitting there on that table up there, but both of the gates are padlocked. So, um, I don't know. I'll try and walk down the other side. Well, I don't know what's happened to my hair. It was fine this morning, I swear. Anyway, el monasterio es definitivamente cerrado. It's been a while since I've tried to do that and failed. But anyway, if you think this video is over, we've got another thing coming, because guess what we're doing? Remember that time in Macedonia? I climbed up a mountain and almost died. I'm gonna do it again. I see some Mexi dogs. Hola. Hello. Oh, I've missed Mexico street dogs. They are truly the best dogs in the world. Hello, Han. Oh. <laughs> I've kind of forgotten how long it takes to film a video, because it's almost five o'clock, and I'm on my way to Cerro de la Estrella, Hill of the Star. You can already see some amazing views down there, Mexico City. I've got to go that way. One thing I forgot to mention about Iztapalapa is that some areas um, have not been reconstructed since the earthquake in 1985. Um, probably not the ones I'm in. You might know that, you might notice that the areas I've been in aren't exactly the roughest areas, if you know what I mean. Purely out of laziness, it's too far to go. But it's, uh, I guess it's a common thing with large cities, you know, the investment goes to the central areas like Centro Historico and Condesa and Roma. I know they were re rebuilt after the earthquake, but you can see possibly some evidence of the fact that investment hasn't taken place here. Okay, we're heading in that direction or somewhere. There's, uh, it's an archeological zone. So there are Aztec ruins at the top. Um, and I just wanna say, I don't know if you can see, you probably can't, but the view already of Mexico City, something I haven't seen before. In fact, you cannot see because of the pollution, that smog in the downtown area, kind of over there. I will try and put the brightness up when I edit this, but you can see all the uh, skyscrapers over there. I saw the uh, Torre, Torre Latino Americano over there somewhere as well. Let's get out of the way, that stupid blue thing. Um, yeah, and it's, you don't feel that pollution. Well, at least I don't when I'm in downtown, but it just gives you an idea of just how polluted Mexico City is. Whoa. Oh fuck. Ugh. Just 
thought I'd add. This is somewhat difficult. Remember that I am at two and a half thousand meters up. This compared to Macedonia is like hell on earth. It's not that bad actually. I don't think we've got far to go. I did read two things about here. One, that you can't come up here without a guide, otherwise you get murdered. And the second one is that there are caves. I don't know if this is actual, actually a cave or is it just, I think it's just a hole. Oh God, it is dark down there, let's have a look. Yeah, I guess you could call this a cave. You've got like the, uh, what's that called? Is that lichen? I don't know, or some kind of um, fungusy stuff on the rock. But yeah, it just goes down there. And it's weird because you do feel that sort of, it feels cool in here as it does in caves. It's also got that damp feeling in here as well. Additionally, you can come here to have sex because there are empty condom wrappers on the ground. Brilliant. Jesus, I don't know who the hell would climb all the way up here to have a shag. I'll be dead by the time I get up here, let alone doing the actual business. Anyway, it's another cave and this one looks slightly more impressive. Let's hope it's not a sex dungeon. Oh, and a campfire. Climb through here. Watch my head. <sighs> wow. This is exploration David style. This is exhausting, but it's good fun. I think I can see the end in sight up there. <sighs> it's starting to rain now and get a bit windy, so I apologize for the wind. But Mexico City is the gift that keeps on giving. Just look at it. climb up these steps now and we are up to the archaeological site which is, was the site of Nuevo, no Fuego Nuevo, New Fire. I'll tell you about that when I get up there. top I feel like I've achieved something today and what that thing is not my hair um, it's a bit windy and my battery is draining to nothing so I think I'll pick this up when I get home <sighs> what a day hope you've enjoyed it right it's the next day and there is another reason I had to leave because the police turned up and I started questioning these two girls that were right near me so I thought I'd make a hasty exit anyway the um, fuego nuevo thing that I said about Basically, every 52 years at the end of a cycle or something, the Aztecs would extinguish all the fires they used for like daily usage, like food and, you know, living. And then they would do a human sacrifice. I know what people have said to me before about human sacrifices and Aztecs, the fact that they didn't do that, that that's a myth. I don't know, I'm just telling you what I've read on the internet. And they would do some sort of ceremony where they would relight the fires and walk all the way down the hill. So, interesting bit of history about those ruins and in, and you know this whole video really has been a bit of an eye-opener for me because despite the fact doing you know god knows over 100 videos in mexico and i think about 40 in mexico city even now i can discover new things as i said mexico is the gift that keeps on giving and the thing i wanted to end this with i have felt slightly off being back in mexico again i feel quite detached and isolated despite the fact i'm in a country country city of millions of people but then I started to think, is Mexico City the problem or am I the problem? It's probably the latter because I've been in Europe for so long this year and it's taken me an incredible amount of time to readjust back to Mexico life. But I'm getting there and, you know, hopefully that will be something that will develop over the course of this Mexico series. I don't know how long I'm going to be here. It's probably going to be a couple of months before I go back to Europe again for Christmas. But we'll see what happens. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I certainly have. It's really brightened up my life going to somewhere completely new 
and um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to check out my website. There will be a blog post about It's Tapalapa on there at some point in the future um, when I get five minutes to have a breather. Anyway, I'll see you next time. We'll be going somewhere else new in Mexico. I'll see you then. Catch you later.